So how did you start creating collages? Early, 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 when I was a kid, I, um, I was in school and we had these scissors and had the rounded edges and so I would cut the construction paper and I, I really liked that. Cutting out stars and boats and, and weird little people. And I liked the cut of it. So, um, and of course you couldn't hurt yourself. So when I got older and I bought my own scissors with the pointed edges, I started being a little more elaborate and I really got into just cutting all sorts of things. Um, and it just, just never stopped. There's a piece downstairs uh, with many, many, many layers. It's these two girls. And there's a, a little um, bit of Hebrew on top. And that's clearly like layer 100. Um, so I'm not saying that the pieces about that Hebrew word is a part of it. So it was an addition to it. Sometimes I'll uh, build a piece around a big text and then later obscure it. There's a, uh, like this piece here is called television because of some of the lines and this, this actually is a speech blurb here. Um, so the text and the sound is implied. So it's hard to say like, is, is it a visual thing or is it an oral thing? This piece here is, um, it's a found object with a cigarette in its mouth so it actually can't talk but you can almost hear it. So, you know, when you say text for me, it's, it has a, a, an oral dimension as well. It's kind of built in. These pieces here, the uh, these perfect friend pieces, um, there's a sound to them, and, and if it's not a sound, it's a literary quality. I produced them in a book, um, and there were 110, I made it in 2003. And I did them one after another, like five a night, a lot of cutting, glue, turn the page. And it was like writing a book. It's hard to say when a piece is finished. Um, sometimes you just know. Sometimes it's fair to say I could take these things back and, and just hit them with a steel wall and start again. I've done that. I've taken pieces that I thought were finished or I stopped working on them so I guess they're finished. And then pull them out of hibernation uh, and then hit them with steel wool. Or in some cases, you know, just cut them apart. Where do you find your images uh, you use for your pieces? A lot of times I find them in the street. Um, things that wash up, because we have after the floods and all this stuff. The idea is that a lot of it washes up, including our personalities and our neuroses, they wash up. Um, sometimes old bookstores, sometimes people give them to me. Um, people mail stuff to me. Um, I like things that are, no one else wants, and there's a lot of that around. And those are the things that have a story, and I like that. Um, so I look for them, or they look for me. What's next for you? Actually, I have a, a, a little exhibition group show uh, in Venice with the Emily Harvey Foundation. They're putting on a show of artists that were uh, part of the residency. So I'm going to contribute a book or something to them. I'll have a little show in Paris. I'm going to make prints and uh, you know, maybe just sit in the bathtub for a while and think about it all.